That'll wake you up. Yeah. Sometimes I think he falls asleep as soon as the music starts. Is he frozen? <laughs> yeah, no, frozen. he's just thinking. Live <laughs> from your ESG candy hangover. Ugh. Three times this week I've gone to bed with a stomach ache because I'm eating so much Halloween candy. I didn't eat any candy. It's a business pants Friday show here at November 3rd Studios featuring all your favorites, Ari the Data Queen, Jesse the Money Whisperer, and Analyst Hole, Matt Mascardi. Yeah. I had, I had someone this morning when my like my uh, login is automatically set to Analyst Hole now. And <laughs> yeah. they, were, they looked at it and they were like, Analyst Hole? What is, <laughs> so is that like a play on words? And I was like, yeah, yes, <laughs> clearly. It's not my name. <laughs> Although, I mean, I think to show true commitment to this company, you should legally change your name. Someone has to commit to this company. <laughs> Let's do it. On That's today's all. weekly wrap-up, union victories, SBF defeats, Uber driver victories, 2050 target defeats, weight loss drug victories, and Glass Cliff CEO defeats. <laughs> Woo! Roller coaster. Wow. We're There's going a on a roller coaster. <laughs> hey, usually it's so it's, it's so horribly negative. At least there's some good things in there. Uh, I'm excited. Well, actually, this week I've had a hard time with assholes. I won't. I won't lie. I only have one depressing what story. I only have one depressing wow. story. All right. Well, let's get to that story first. It's actually my third story. Let's get to it third. <laughs> Late breaking news last night. FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried. I don't know why anyone. Why I'm the only one with this dumb joke. I, it, I, I don't know. I don't really keep get, it going. Yeah. It'll catch on. But why? I don't know why they wouldn't. Uh, found guilty of all charges and one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. A jury found. Woo! Oh, shut up! You weren't paying attention. Uh, a jury found SBF guilty of seven counts of fraud and conspiracy after deliberating for about five hours. Less than wow. five hours. Oh, that's quick. Well, how many counts fast? was he was sad. he up for? Uh, was it se- that, seven out of seven? That, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing it's seven out of seven. Good. It they, does it all charges. They, uh, uh, he probably seven didn't get charged seven, for everything, though. And I heard um, his max sentence could be 110 oh. years. <gasps> Well, there's yes. almost no Faces way. Faces up to 110 years in prison. He's, he's going to get a pretty stiff penalty because they're going to use wow. him. They're going to use him. Yeah, but he's going to be in a minimum security prison with yeah, the, oh, stuff. Like, like a, that's good. A, oh, I mean, as long as he has access to internet, he'll be fine. You know what? Is I thought of a new idea, actually. <laughs> uh, let me test this thought of punishment for you guys. For, for when a CEO Uh-oh. like us does, does something like this, does something heinous, why okay. not? They're clearly good Builders of something. I'm, ta- I'm thinking of like Elizabeth Holmes, Sam Bankman Fry. Right. Okay. Why don't we? Okay. Why don't we just put them in prison, a minimum security prison where they're already going to be, and let them and make them let them stuff. build a company where all the profits go to good, like some altruistic Whoa. company. Yeah, no, no, actually, but- I'm dead serious. Some altruistic company that 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 it could be as simple as cleaning. That's forced Garbage. labor. Their motivation will change. I don't care. And then they won't make the, any you're money. You're talking about labor camps. I now. think you're. It's not a labor <laughs> camp. I think you're wrong. Actually, I think their motivation will be to like founder camp to get rid of their horrible <laughs> reputation. Like you know, I I don't know why you would dismiss this idea. Honestly, I think if he had access to internet and access to a computer in prison, he will build something from prison. So yeah, uh, well, that make, is my prediction. So fine, he and can build. He do it in Bitcoin where no one can find he it. He can build actually, a company. Can I take that prediction? <laughs> yeah. I don't have. <laughs> Can I just tell you that uh, the great CNBC has, above the SBF story, they have uh, a big picture of Jeff Bezos, and the headline is, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is leaving Seattle for Miami. Oh. Yeah. Ew. This is how much the business Terrible news cares move. about this story. So there, there you I go. did read a story that was like Silicon Valley shrugs at yep. SBF. Yeah, like, because he's uh, the perfect verdict. he's the perfect fall guy. He's the perfect foil. He's the perfect like he's the one bad apple, right? It's only happening <laughs> oh, here, right? Because, just because Matt, it, it, it was just him, right, Matt? It, there was yeah. no and other his girlfriend. Don't forget his girlfriend. No <laughs> other co-conspirators. There were there was no capital being given to him. There was no one looking the other way. It, it's just this one Jewish kid who screwed up. I do have to say, um, I'm seventy five percent of the way through. Michael Lewis's book, 
And there was a lot of critics of the book saying like he went really soft on SBF and like, you know, painted him in this really good light and he clearly liked it. Actually, they're all wrong. I, I, I've never heard, I've never read a thing that made someone look like more of a dick and an asshole oh, than wow. this book does in all, every subtle way possible. Cause you read the book and you're like, I know this person. I've met this person. He goes to like all the best schools. Yeah. He's got that casual white privilege about him. Uh -huh. He thinks everything can be distilled down to a probability. It's like he's he was because such it could, a dick. Because that's, yet, that was his reality, though. Yeah. Well, people don't hate assholes and dicks. They hate Matt. That's I mean, the thing. The, that's the yeah, thing. I'm the analyst hole. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, do they hate me? No. I don't <laughs> oh, is someone here to say they hate you? <laughs> someone, that was somebody at the Come door. Take him. Tell me I'm an That's asshole. That's the first big story of the week. Second big story of the week, which I think probably other people will cover, so I, I can go quickly. The uh, United Auto Workers reaches a deal with GM, which means that they're ending the strike wow. against all three Detroit automakers. Uh, and this is not just, uh, uh, like, this is a victory. Uh, this is a clear victory. The the. The concessions they're getting are not like, you know, it's not like an 8% raise. I not mean, they're, laughable. Yeah, this is a, a true labor win over there in Detroit. How long from now do we have to wait to say that everything GM, Ford, and Stellantis, they were saying about like how this will kill EVs and Matt's like, they already, have, they already have done how, that. But Matt. no, wait, but how long do we have to wait to, before we can call them, call it all bullshit, right? Yeah. Like call it all negotiating tactics that failed. Because... In the history, I think that I can think of one labor strike that actually killed the company, and that was um, Hostess. Twinkies mm -hmm. went down. Good. And then Good. got bought by a private equity firm, and you can still get Twinkies, right? So it didn't yeah. really go down. Uh, this is this is this not is to mention good. this is like good news. I'm excited for what's going to happen to Tesla, though. The no, oh, okay, that's no. that. No. We'll get to, we'll get to that. That's actually my prediction. Oh, okay. We'll get to that. Um, oh, and I will say that UAW is already uh, gearing up to organize other non-union automakers. Tesla being one of them, but that's part of my prediction. And Matt, but Tesla's the only American one that doesn't have a union. Yeah, it's not going to mm -hmm. ever change. Uh, Matt, to your point. Those three companies, early reports are that they spent uh, at least $3 billion. They lost $3 billion uh, dragging their heels on the strike. So, I mean, how That's much, on them. How, how much are they paying these people? Like the, the, the pay that they were trying to avoid is roughly what they lost <laughs> yeah. overall, isn't it? Like, yeah. what are we doing? We're hating on labor, I guess. I guess that's what they I, were like, doing. What was Trying the to send point? a message. Yes. yes. Uh, all right. Um, Moving on. What's next? Uh, third big story of the week. Uh, this is the only depressing one I really have. The uh, this was this story was the best way to summarize a lot of the headlines I've seen over uh, the last three weeks since the war has broken out in the Middle East. Uh, the headline is the biggest threat to global order since the 1930s is underway, and every CEO is talking about it. Um, featuring this from J.P. Morgan, uh, J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon said this may be the most dangerous time the world has seen in decades. He said this in a statement that accompanied the bank's recent earnings release. So this, uh, so this is like part of actual like, right? So this <laughs> wow, is filing. This is not just him talking to some dope at CNBC. So anyway, um, I thought this was the best way to kind of summarize all the angst going on, kind of in the CEO world, and they're they're fighting students and. They're, they're worried, and there's just a lot of weirdness going on. Uh, in fact, there was even a story that will be buried that no one will talk about other than us probably, that LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman, who's now on the board of Microsoft, I saw this. is, is yeah. now going after... Um, and of course, this overlaps with part of our conversation with Nell yesterday. We talked to the great Nell Minow yesterday, Matt, which we'll release next week. But yeah. he's targeting... Women of color, representatives in the Congress, including um, Tlaib out of Michigan and Cori Bush in Missouri, he's targeting their seats in Congress. Democrat, he's a Democrat. He's targeting these Democrats because he's pissed off about their response, uh, about their points of view on geopolitics. But but there's a lot of craziness going on in the CEO world. That's that's all I'm trying to say. I, I, I do feel like the biggest threat isn't like, because the quote is like geopolitics is coming into the boardroom. Um, in a way it hasn't in my lifetime. That's what Jamie Dimon said. And I, I, I actually feel like it's not so much that geopolitics is in the boardroom. It's that 
geopolitics, thanks to social media and sort of knee jerk outrage, woke, anti woke, is binary now. There's yeah. like, you can't have an opinion unless it's the right one and you don't like and yeah, that's right in air quotes either you're for or anti yeah it's it's there's never any there's no conversation there's no like you know there's no middle ground there's no like well it's possible that this you know it was a horrible thing but also another horrible thing well, was happening you know like yeah. there's no conversation i was gonna say this is the perfect example of that map because the the reality of of this situation is that it is like a shining example of of how fraught it is with confusion like it it I am like, it, like I, along with Jamie Dimon, have been like uber depressed over the last three weeks. But most of it is because Aww. most of it is because uh, I have so many complicated feelings trying to figure out how to feel about any of this. Ba partly based on my identity, partly based on my politics, partly based on a lot of things. But there is no black and white on this. Like you're not no. human if you have a black and white response to this. It is. Because that's not how tragedy works. It's much more complicated. But that's what, like so. that's what like Reed Hoffman is turning it into. I know, like, right? I, I know. don't like what Talib said. Yeah, primarier, and get her out. And don't forget like, that Talib what? Talib is Palestinian. She is the only yeah. Palestinian <laughs> representative in our Congress. Yeah, but she also it's happens a to be a woman bananas. of color. And as we pointed out. Yesterday, the anti woke. Who do they target mostly with this new anti ESG campaign? They target women of color. Like that's. Their I think that might have been the only thing, and you'll hear this in the inter interview when we drop it next week with Nell. The only thing we said to Nell that Nell was surprised by when we said that Strive Asset Management, and the anti woke, we can demonstrably show disproportionately targets women and, and women of color. color. Yeah, yeah. I think she was also surprised that we that we had a brain cell between the two of us. Uh, oh. <laughs> Was that it? Yeah, because she did. She did. <laughs> she praised our research at the end of the show, meaning like, I'm surprised you guys showed up with a thought. I, yeah, I'm surprised you read a thing, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. I don't really care. All right, for fourth big story of the week, I always have pick a just a dumb CEO story, but this, this I like this one. HBO CEO Casey <laughs> Bloys, and one again, Ooh, tough name. Pe people who write about business. Hello. Like if you were writing about the the Boston Celtics, like uh, their great uh, player Jason Tatum, you wouldn't say the headline wouldn't say Boston Celtics starting forward scores thirty five. <laughs> that's true. Like, can that's you name that's these people? Percent true. Can everyone yeah, your stupid head? Can point. you start naming these effing people? I, I, I yeah. drives me crazy. HBO CEO Casey Bloys admits he used fake Twitter accounts. Uh, to troll critics who left negative reviews. And the reason why I picked this story is because he is self-owning this one, saying it was a very, very dumb idea to vent my frustration while working from home and doing an unhealthy amount of scrolling through Twitter. So he's admitting that he's well, not even doing his job. Um, <laughs> That's part of his job. I think actually his yeah. job should not should be not on Twitter though. Like don't scroll Twitter. Uh, absolutely. And this yeah. was this again was like this one to me was there a like anti-Semitic tweet that he did to troll? Was there cuz it seems like he might be apologizing in like it's like um you know the 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 guy who jaywalked on Twitter apologizing for jaywalking meanwhile Nazis are on Twitter right like I don't that is true why, it seems a little like who cares like if you're on Twitter this is not the worst you could possibly do yeah, this in, is nothing in fact her. I I found one of the the instances where he created this fake account and this is who he pretended to be one of the troll accounts he created was the name of a fake Texas mom named oh. named Kelly Shepard, whose bio describes her, that's really a hint, him, obviously, yeah. as a vegan aroma aromatherapist and herbalist in Texas? Oh I guess Austin. Gosh. He means Austin, right? <laughs> yeah, that's not correct. That's not, he, and I mean, that should have been a, 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 like a red flag. This is a, a, a not a real account. And here's what Kelly said. Kelly went after two critics at the New York Times uh, and, and responded to their lukewarm review of some series called The Nevers. And Kelly said, how shocking that two middle-aged white men are shitting on a show about women. <laughs> I mean, I wish he had just put his actual name attached to that comment. Yeah, why this, not? This is all kind of, kind of wrong. Because can I can I just, you know, the subtext here that needs to be brought up is that 
that show he's talking about was created by Josh Joss Whedon, who originally created the show uh, Buffy the Buffy, Vampire right? Slayer. Yeah, Joss Joss is uh, is infamous for um, a, a, a slew of like uh, sexual harassment. Yeah, and me too. He was like a me too uh, guy. Uh, yeah, in the production of Buffy and other productions, so he's actually defending this Ooh, this harass this serial lot. harasser. <laughs> Look, as a woman saying that these two men are shitting on a show about women, like, I'm so confused. This doesn't <laughs> like, yeah, work honestly. in this is the binary the, world. Yeah, and this is from the CEO of HBO. <laughs> yeah. Right. Why wouldn't he outsource the trolling? That's what I don't he get. Yeah, well, that's part of the story, Ari, is he actually did. He tried to outsource the trolling. He made some of his staff do some of the trolling, and that's how this came up, is because one of the staff is suing him, so. <laughs> suing him? Oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, come on, you, right. gotta, you gotta go on Fiverr and just hire some people. Yeah, yeah you can get this done on Upwork yeah. for like 80 cents. Um, Too true. All right, so we got FTX founder SBF is guilty of all charges. UAW reaches a deal um, ending the strikes. The biggest threat to humanity um, since the 1930s and uh, HBO CEO's fake Twitter trolls. Um, what do you got? Forget about climate change, right? Um, I think the story of the week this week was the UAW um, yeah. the union. It, it, it yeah. seemed like a slam dunk until it's SBF probably. came around. Yeah. I know. That was late last It's a hard one. Okay. It's a hard one. It's just, it's just not Anybody else? Jesse. Ten hours. Uh, so Damien doesn't yell at me. <laughs> I'm going to choose F. SBF. Oh, Look, now we're just I'm creating not trying the drama. To, You're not even Jesse, I'm not what trying you to rig the no, vote. I was between I was equally between both of those. Thank you. So I'm not trying to rig the I'm vote. I'm going to go with the one that lets Matt yeah, and I like, maybe I like Damian Matt. have an opinion. But it actually gives Matt gives Matt the tiebreaker. Really. He's not going to vote for the last two stories. Uh, no, I, I, I'm going to see. I'm torn between those two also because I think the UAW deal is. I'm worried that the UAW deal is actually the peak of the union. No, wins. it couldn't be. I, I'm couldn't not. Be. I'm, I'm not sure that it goes much farther than this. But I don't either believe way, that. SBF is the largest it's bigger than enron it's the largest fraud case in history that we know of um and it is the penultimate governance failure mm -hmm. and we do governance data we do people data it, it does feel to me like this is the one we should be celebrating we celebrate anything so i'm going to go with sbf i mean did we think he was not going to get found guilty though because no we didn't but i didn't have a doubt i didn't either uh, but I think the press played a good hand in that. It, you know, I think the way they portrayed him uh, up until the up until the trial made him seem really guilty. I guess I don't know, but it's it's Maybe. hard it's hard to see any any other person getting blamed, right? I mean, he ran the enterprise, but yeah. Hey, I, I got some good news. By the way. In honor of Goodliest, I have some good news for all the uh, the people listening to the show. This is actually the last Friday show that I'm going to be hosting, and that Matt's going to have control over his horrible sound effects, because I am officially handing this over to either some combination of Ari and Jesse to host this show. And I'm going to, I'm going to starting uh -huh. next week, and I'm going to say to both of you, I don't know what you're going to work out here, is that please feel free to throw away Matt's horrible transition okay. sound effect. Well, you tried that once and then they came back with a vengeance. But I'm I'm and saying can, I'm saying you got you two They can always come back and post. I'm saying you, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Not one of you knows how to edit a file. Cuz so, I I have got a lot I sort of do. I've got a lot of feedback from fans uh, over the last few days that they are really tired of my voice and my personality so i'm gonna, I'm gonna hand it over that's true that is true and, yeah. and yours right. too, that. and yours too i Maybe. was wondering oh, if no, you were no. just like giving up or no okay he's the, the reality i is, was worried jesse, about you jesse the reality is is that matt and i are excited to announce that we're doing on yet another show featuring our horrible voices <laughs> called the yeah. uh, something about the proxy show we haven't named it yet but it's gonna be a a, a weekly look into uh, how to vote your proxy and what's going on at annual meetings. So, really, it's just uh, it, it's just time anyway for this show to to go over to some better people. I don't anyway. We got you. We got no you. worries. Yeah. Well, let's start by doing goodliest of the week and see if they're actually better. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna <laughs> oh, shut up. Boy, he's gonna nope. shit in all of my stories. No now. pressure. I probably right. sent her these stories, so who knows? Here we go. 
<laughs> Uber and Lyft will pay New York yep. three hundred and twenty-eight million dollars to settle wage theft allegations. Yeah. Wow. Is that my is that my Dude, my this woman is a Leticia? Lot of money. Is that Leticia at work? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Leticia James. Um, so. Jamie, I don't know about you, but if you drove for Uber or Lyft between 2014 and 2017, you can check if you're eligible for a payout. Uh, yesterday, New York AG Letitia James, um, she announced of this settlement because Uber and Lyft stole driver's pay by deducting sales tax, black car fees, and administrative charges. Hmm. This should all have been paid by the riders. Uber went the extra mile here and they led drivers to believe that they were entitled to charge the rider for any tolls. However, they did not have a way to actually charge the riders for the tolls, so they were liable for that. This is funny. Um, the settlement also includes paid sick leave, an earnings floor, proper hiring and earnings notices, etc. And you know, this if you're not sold yet, this is really important and yeah. this is good because two thirds of New York gig drivers actually do this full time. This is yeah. a full time job. Wait, th so this is this is New York. I, I read this is New York City. This is the entire state of New York. Is that what's this going on? This is the entire state of New okay. York. Okay, okay. Can, can we just pause for a second? These two companies, As you keep talking. first of all, they spent $100 million in California to stop, like to lobby against the bill that was gonna make gig workers mm -hmm. effectively labor for mm -hmm. the companies. Their entire business model is built on the fact that these gig workers are contractors. They're not yep. labor. Right. right? It's got to change. And meanwhile, they figured out a way to rip <laughs> off yeah. the not labor labor. Right. Like it's not even like a normal like we're just going to rip off our employees because they're not your employees. They're just ripping off everyone. Mm -hmm. And this is from 2014 to 2017. Uber just had its first profitable quarter this year. Hey, it really needed to rip uh, Apparently, <laughs> maybe it's all a signal that they shouldn't exist. What's surprising? Like, I agree. It's time. I agree. Yeah, Jesse, didn't yeah. you you presented a story about a month ago about a company that is looking to compete with Uber and Lyft using actual drivers as employees, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's Ari, that, that won't work. What surprises me here is that I'm not surprised by Uber, but so both so Lyft copycatted Uber. They were both doing the same they exact. Were both, they were they were stealing they were wages in the exact same, same way. That's that's. Yep. That's, Lyft called it administrative charges, okay. while Uber just went with tax taxes and uh, black car fees. Okay. And they're told. That's that's depressing. But yeah, it's depressing. I so, don't know and, why. And like this it, money, this yeah. money will go straight to the drivers, and they said that you know upwards of a hundred thousand people are entitled to so they're not gonna get uh, much. apply for this yeah i mean if it's a hundred thousand that's three thousand dollars oh is each. it that much okay that's something yeah that's a that's, that's a good holiday that's bonus. not nothing yeah right. that's holidays see that'd so, be like and, if they were actual you don't employees hear about that happening they might get very actual often bonus. yeah <laughs> you know you don't hear about that happening very often yeah. usually it's like here's your one dollar that's true i don't know if this one made me feel good or depressed so let's do the next <laughs> one goodbye. Right. i feel good Oh, this next one, I don't know about if it made me feel good or depressed, but <laughs> BlackRock study finds companies with more women in workforce outperform rivals. Oh. Yeah. This, <laughs> so, because we need applause. studies to, uh, yes. to say these things in order to justify. Hear. Yeah. Tell me about this study. Equity. So this study looked at data from the last 10 years and found that companies with a greater number of women in management, yes. higher standard of maternity, Maturity policies, they outperformed companies who lag in this area by an average of 29%. This seems important. And this is their return on this, assets. It seems like an important study, no? Am I wrong? It, it's been done before. Okay, right, but so what? Changed. Why can't we keep I know, doing it? Obviously, them? hasn't you, gotten through to people. Yeah. We literally did it at MSCI. This was like our paper from okay. 2013. Well, but you need to keep listen to you. Yeah, you need to keep Nobody. saying it. You need to keep Nobody. saying it. You need to keep saying it. You need more people. 29% say it. More people. That's incredible. That's yeah, incredible. that's significant. Say it again. I don't know. There's, uh, I feel that's like. That's significant. I love this. I don't, Good job, Art. Part already. of the problem is I, if I, when I looked at the paper, it was they took like the middle quintile. Uh huh. And they didn't adjust for like sectors and they included the entire workforce. Right. So it didn't say like it didn't just say gender parity and management. They didn't use something like influence and power. Mm -hmm. Right. Like um, they look 
the, the ways that they looked at this could buy a certain sectors that have larger female workforces and those sectors could have just outperformed over time. There's a lot of ways that you could like look at a study like this and rip it apart. That's why these studies Shush. are Kill so difficult. Yeah, but aren't mind. the sectors doing the best like tech, which is dominated by men? I don't know about that. They're not looking at education. I, I'm just saying. Dominated can by I, women getting can, paid pennies. Just saying. Can I insert something even more important Please. to this? Because you guys are you're boring me with your your... You're making this good story bad. How dare you make this bad, man? Uh, from the ESG data perspective, this this speaks to something that's always irritated me, is that, yes, uh, we have great, especially here in the U.S., uh, in the West, we have really easy access to the boards of directors at these companies, right? So we can collect a lot of data, we can do a lot of analysis, but what we don't have easy access to is senior management. It is, it is a, other than the top five highly paid you know, executives in America, yeah. you don't get this information, which has always pissed me off. Like I, 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 we need access to executive data, executive information. We need this. I agree with you, um, but I do think the goodliest part of this story is not the findings for BlackRock, but the fact that in the midst of like hardline conservatives in America targeting women and people of color and DEI and the whole thing, BlackRock actually published mm. the study that's basically a middle finger to all of them, like a big fuck you, because they you published really it. You really think that was their intention? No, I don't think that was their intention, oh. but they could have shelved it, right? Like, yeah. they're not even talking about ESG anymore. I don't anymore. know if I would give them that much credit, though. I just think it's a bigger deal that they actually published the study than, it, than the findings of the study. Right. I mean, hopefully. I like both. Of course, uh, job already of course, we look. Their portfolio managers uh, diversify a little, right? And by the way, BlackRock <laughs> like buy the actual people buy our data. BlackRock. Um, <laughs> I will say this: that we dig pretty deep for our stories around here. I, I mean, I spend an inordinate amount of time looking for stories to tag for yeah, our long, yeah. for our enterprises. This came from didn't come from CNBC, didn't come from Forbes, didn't come from Business Insider or Wall Street Journal. It came from investmentweek.co.uk so it's not exactly <laughs> this is why this is are why they not screaming are they're not shouting this from the rooftops yeah i mean this? this is why you need more studies like this because people need to know these things anyway keep going Arnie. all right e-cigarettes use decline declines among high school students fda and cdc says are you feeling good or depressed i, can't I think tell. you, oh you pick a lot of vaping stories Ari. what is that about you no you, no you Vape pens have batteries in them, so it's really just an extension <laughs> this is of a battery. Positive is. Are you a former vapor, Ari? Be honest. No, well, no, never have. All right. But the 2023 National Youth Tab Tobacco Survey findings released yesterday showed that between 2022 and 2023, e-cigs used among high school students declined from 14 percent to 10 percent. And I want to remind you that in 2019, it was 28. Wow. Wow. That's we, a also, lot. we also reported recently that alcohol use is dropping with young kids too, right? Like beer. Uh, oh, no, no, no. That they're rejecting uh, beer. They, they favor non alcoholic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, but I, I will tell you. Was that youth or was that like in people in their 20s? It, yeah, okay. Well, those are, those, those are young people well, to me, high, Jesse. These are I, high schoolers. <laughs> I will say right. the the only thing I ever praise America for is that I am I am always uh, exhilarated, impressed. I don't know what the word is. I, I I can't believe that we seem to be the only country that has solved the cigarette problem. Like Americans don't seem to smoke anymore, which well, is amazing. Well, remember I don't they know. tried to make a comeback with Juul and va yeah. vaping. That's why a bunch of kids ended up in the hospital. Uh, I believe it was July of 2019 with lung problems. A bunch of kids actually died from vaping. Mm -hmm. They didn't realize that there was nicotine in vaping. Uh -huh. um, and one of the things that the FDA did was ban flavors. So you couldn't like vape your mango or cotton candy Bubble or gum. whatever. Right. Right. This is, this is the one thing and that gives me hope. that's actually helped. This is the one thing that gives me hope because this is why I like to refer to social media. I put it in our drugs category because if we can... If we can regulate the hell out of tobacco and, and have some effect here, wh then we can do exactly. other things. We can. That's the goodliest. Yeah. Yes. No, I'm with you. Government actually with you. doing something. I'm with you. Mm. And, you know, <laughs> granted, um, even though, for example, FBAR, this Chinese brand uh, vape, it has been banned by the FDA, but you can still find it on 
shelves around the country, or even though it's house. been banned. Yeah. The CDC is trying, <laughs> trying to, uh, or CDC and FDA are trying to fight All right, stop, illegal. Stop depressing with your vape stories. <laughs> <laughs> what and else you got? What else you got? Come on. Well, I think the UAW. Yes. Yay! Yes. Yay! There it is. Yeah. Just, I don't know how anything else could be. I mean, the other three were just a joke to get us to this yes. point. Yeah. What a victory. What an incredible victory. And what I, 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 we talked about this. I don't know if we talked about this with Nell or Wednesday, Matt, but also just the the strategy used for this victory right. was yes. just so was good, just so incredible smart. the dude was playing chess it was awesome yeah. really awesome and every and and Mary Barra was was bi- while she was busy being like I didn't get like a forty percent increase I got a thirty eight thirty nine percent or whatever like like she's yeah. saying that no comeback because like, there is no it, comeback like, there is the no UAW comeback. is strategically like removing limbs from each company yeah there there is literally no comeback for C- CEOs making like roughly forty million dollars a year because of equity because of getting options when the market is down there's no comeback for that that's why. So uh, that's my vote. UAW. Of course, of course. Right. Yeah. I don't think you even read, Damien, when you when you talked about it, I think you mentioned that the starting wages uh, increased by 68%. Yeah, it's incredible. And the eight-year got- path to top wages went from eight years to three years. Wait, yeah. is that great. over time, though? Or it's like immediate. no, immediately, immediately. Well, because I know something was like over ten years, and I was like, "Well, that's annoying." <laughs> no, there's Jesse. There's really nothing. There's stuff. nothing annoying about this victory. They also reinstated cost of living adjustments. They got rid of tiered pay. They have the right to strike over plant closure. There's so much they're getting. It's just uh, it's, it's good amazing. stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's good stuff. I don't think this is it. I think it's going to keep going. I don't anyway. think it's it. I don't this think is it's the it. top. I actually don't. I think this is going to be the the model. I've been reading a little bit about the the types of uh, people they use to to you know the, they the the types of people the UAAW hired to to help organize and help make this fight. And I think they're going to use this model. I think the billionaires know now. I think actually, no. like they're marshalling. Do you think they're paying it? Okay, they're all narcissists. Do you think that they're like, oh, this could happen to oh. me? I'm gonna pay attention. One hundred percent. Oh, one hundred percent. You've got a billion Elon, dollars. Elon so cocky. Musk is sitting there being like, this would never happen yeah, to Tesla. Yeah, they're so no. cocky. Yeah, because they're he like, is, would oh, not happen to those me. Suckers. Because he's not a friend. This is Mary no. Barrow. They like, know it could happen to Tesla because they're so busy quashing unions from even starting that they're terrified that it could happen. That's why they do all the quashing. That's why you have Amazon killing unions you've got uh, Musk killing unions everybody at Starbucks, Starbucks is trying to kill yeah. the unions I'm on Damien's side they were all song. trying to kill it because they know that this is this is a potential outcome so I think that, that that this is like this is like not a shot across the bow this is like okay this is a real problem I'm, incre- they, I'm incredibly they, they optimistic really about win. this because there's there's clearly a strategy that other uh, 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 unions can use here clearly a strategy so this was a sweep the UAW yep. is the yeah. win, which means we're on to <laughs> assholiest of the week. All right, first up, first um, asshole. You're gonna have to. I'm gonna force you to listen to this full list. Okay? Oh boy! Please these, don't. Please don't do that. I wish you had um, the leaders of these companies. <laughs> what were you doing in between everything Damian was now, saying? Now I wasn't going to, but now I might. Um, <laughs> No, here, uh, here, but I will make it a little bit more entertaining for you. Here we go. <laughs> These people. Yeah. Lightspeed Venture Partners, New Enterprise Associates, Sequoia Capital, Insight Partners, Thomas Bravo, oh, Third Point, Van Eck, SoftBank, Circle Financial Group, Ribbit Capital, Altimeter Capital, Willoughby Capital, Hudson River Trading, Senator Investment Group, Multicoin Capital, Coinbase Ventures, Bond, Race Capital, Standard Investments, Paradigm, Sino, Sino, Global Capital, Institute. Institutional Venture Partners, Temasek Holdings, Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, the Pension Plan, Tiger Global Management, BlackRock, Iconic Capital, C Capital, uh, Steadview Capital, and SB Investment Advisors, and finally, Paradigm. You forgot. Why? You forgot Insight Partners. How dare you? I think I said them twice. That's why I skipped (laughs) over them. Uh, They were at the top. That is the list of assholes who did literally zero due diligence. 
at all because they were so founder fetishized, they demanded no books, no accounting, and they caved to whatever the founder's demands were, and that founder was Sam Bankman Freed, who's found guilty on seven counts of fraud and conspiracy. So they gave him money? They gave him billions. Should With we no- hit them up? Is this the list? Of Bill- investors that we need to hit up right now. <laughs> yeah, because but no, we have. You won't books. even look at our books, Matt. Not I only mean, did they give them billions, but they books. they were willing to look the other way without they had no risk management in place. The government it was a governance shit show, and they were willing to look the other way. They so. didn't care. I can I cannot fathom. And now they're all in line as um you know, as suing. Yeah. obviously, and trying to get like a, a claim on FTX's uh, payouts. They probably won't because they're equity holders. So mm. they, these are losses for them. The customers should get made whole first and any anyone who issued a bond. But the fact that I just listed, <laughs> a lot. what, 25 oh. funds? That took a while. <laughs> like that's, that's a joke. It's a joke that that many firms were so fucking focused on the fact that FTX was pulling in billions despite the fact that it had no governance, no books, no audits. They did no due diligence on anything. They just gave him money because they thought that guy's making money hand you know, over fist and he seems so cool. You know who agrees with you? Uh, Charlie Munger. He's he's calling out uh, venture capital firms this week. Yeah. For once, oh. I agree with Charlie <laughs> also, Munger. Also, uh, tangentially here, uh, along the lines of you're talking about founder fetish, uh, we work, according to the Wall Street Journal, set to file for bankruptcy early next week. So Yeah, that, another one. Yeah. Congratulations to everyone who's failed everywhere. <laughs> Now, like a part of this was like a culty thing too, because when you in Michael Lewis's book, he spends a lot of time talking about the effective altruists, mm-hmm. the effective altruism movement, and it's 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 a fucking cult. It's like it's designed for specifically for effectively white billionaires to feel like, well, I can use my mathematical God-given, you know, uh, genius to really target the most effective philanthropy, not like you peons who work with humans. I'm going to use probabilistic models to say, this is how you should give your money away. And by the way, in order to get to that state, I need a tremendous amount of money to do it. So I will kill, pillage, and rape all along the way, anyone in my way to get the money so that I can donate it to the people I killed, pillaged, and raped. It is a great model, isn't it? Like I, I will steal the, the collective wealth and then, so that I can give it back to you in a way that I ID necessary. And Lewis points out in the book too that like that that in there are a few places that he's ever seen where people thought about having more money themselves individually hmm. than effective altruists who all like have this narcissistic belief that they and only they are the ones who can dole out the money effectively, right? Yeah. Which means there's it should be, well, we all believe in the same kind of movement, which means we should collectively pool the money and we should use it for good. No. You know, Sam Bankman Fried gave no one equity in the company. He like until he sold off bits of it to venture capital. He like that he wanted to keep every dollar for himself. Like it was cr- he crazy knew best because he knew best. But you're really speaking to the rot of the VC world in general, Matt, because you a lot of it is they're, they're looking for the unicorns, right? They're looking for the Adam Newmans and the FBFs because you they they know that if you invest in a hundred companies and you invest in a hundred narcissists, one of these narcissists is going to figure out how to how to make that company yeah, it's true. right become worth sixty billion dollars. So they're ba- they're basically betting on narcissistic behavior because that's the that's only way it. you can grow to scale so quickly and ignore the rest of the world while you just like chew them up like a, like an you uber know what it same case it's uber really depressing it's, you know what it says sorry, to me Jesse, it says sorry. to me i need to go like like to more vc calls go ahead shirtless go. talking about oh, how no, no, if no. you didn't getting a massage if, if you didn't invest in me you're the biggest idiot that ever walked well, the I, planet you know I, matt it, it's uh, gotta we work need a, you need a new office work. if you're gonna do that it's gotta work there's a hundred percent chance matt you're joking but there's a lot of, you know i mean clearly there's a lot of truth to that statement i mean there's it, it's not completely unfounded what you're saying Oh, I I know because I yeah. was on a call with a shirtless. Well, can we, <laughs> well think about it. But we already <laughs> talked. <laughs> it was we, horrible. That's true. We already talked about <laughs> about Uber, right? But Uber was created by that behavior, right? Travis Kalanick, right? I mean, who was eventually ousted from his own company because he's such a 
abhorrent. Well, I started a new firm. Such he's, an abhorrent he's person. Doing new things now. But I'm saying that th- that that's what made Uber into what it is today. It was that that narcissistic behavior, and that's why he was so heavily invested in. It. But anyway, keep so going. that's asshole number one. That list of 25 people <laughs> who haven't given money to Free Float to do governance work. But they gave money to SBF. They don't have money for governance. Because That's they did true, no Jesse. governance That's work. That's true. Yeah, maybe Jesse's right. Maybe they just didn't have a budget for they governance They just have work. money for gambling. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that actually is bad for us. All right, number two. I read this headline and it made me realize every company with a 2050 carbon target is still an asshole. Because this has been the asshole of the week before. The headline is, in early 2029, Earth will likely lock into breaching key warming threshold scientists calculate. Mm. What? So here's a quick calculation for you. There are 2,800 company constituents of the MSCI ACWI index. Mm -hmm. That is basically a global large cap index set by MSCI. 574 of those companies have set 2050 targets. Uh So 574 of you will be approximately 21 years too late oh. to do anything about climate change. Meanwhile, 1,300 of those companies have set targets after 2029. So mm-hmm. 2030 targets, 2040 targets. So fully, one in two companies on the MSCI ACWI index have targets after we've locked in mm. death. Congratulations, idiot companies. And that doesn't even count the companies. They, it, honestly, if you're a company that set no target, you kind of look better at this point. <laughs> well, you're better off. At least you're not promising. At least you didn't fake way. it. Matt, does that mean you're giving credit to Starbucks, who is promising to have recyclable lids by 2027? <laughs> no. But are they all going to be the same size and interchangeable? These are strictly carbon no targets, idea. not Come on, plastic what else? lid targets. Come on. All right, number three. And we talked about this a couple of times, but I'm just making it an asshole this week. Appointing directors. Ooh. Notice how I didn't say electing yeah. directors. I said appointing huh. directors. Because I got all excited. This is this is an insight into how nerdy I am. Last night uh-huh. I'm reading stuff and I'm looking through SEC Edgar as I do <laughs> on a Thursday night. As one would. Um and the Winnebago proxy dropped last night. Winnebago, dropped. yeah, the the, the uh, <laughs> RV company, it dropped like a hot record by Drake. By DJ Diesel. <laughs> and then I was looking through their filings because I saw that their proxy dropped and I was going to go look through it. And when I found out there was an 8K that I missed from October 11th, 2023, oh. this was the 8K. Winnebago Industries appoints Stacy Kroon to board of directors. Appoints. Mm-hmm. Huh. Mm-hmm. So the proxy dropped last night. Last night, in case you're calculating, is not October 11th. Uh It's actually November 2nd. And the AGM, where they elect directors, is set for December 14th. Stacey Kroon gets to serve on the board for two (laughs) full months before she's elected to the board. Yeah. Somebody explain to me how this is allowed. Can, we, like, do this, can is, we do this with the president? Can I appoint the next president before the election? I have some ideas. It's unbelievable. Like, why yeah. don't we? Like, that's this is supposed yeah. to be a democracy. Worse, she got put on the comp committee before the proxy dropped, which means there's a chance before the proxy dropped that she had to vote for CEO Michael Happy's pay. Mm-hmm. She was appointed by this board who Michael Happy sits on the board. Was she filling a seat? I don't understand. Probably, right? Just like I mean, it, it almost vacancy. doesn't matter. though. But, but like, can't they just wait two months? Yes. I don't get it. The, the answer is yes, They sorry. can. They absolutely can wait two months. Yeah. They're we like, talked oh, about this. too much work here. Did we not talk about this also with Nell Minow? I'm plugging her interview again. See? We did. We did talk to her about it. And um, I think she was as baffled as we were that it happens. Although she did not like my idea of having everybody at the annual general meeting, like five candidates have to like get up and give a stump speech. Yeah, like, like they that. have to like, like stand that. there and be like, as, as a member of this board, I promise that I will rein in spending. She and didn't like, like that I voice, that. that's why, yeah. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm making appointing directors um, a an asshole of the week. I mean, she... The, the, just as a side note, she got to vote on the 19% increase in the CEO stock award pay. Mm-hmm. And this is the same CEO whose 2022 option award, the strike price of the options was below market price on the day they granted him. The, oh. uh, so, so all he had to do 
was not tank the company. He didn't have mm -hmm. to grow anything. He didn't have to do anything. He had to exist <gasps> had for to three breathe. years to get or like, just to make yeah. money on this. Or just hope the general market goes up and then he just benefits from just being there, right? So appointing directors um, is an asshole. And well, then Matt, finally... I gotta say, yeah. the good news here is that... There's uh, good news? As, as we've learned, the people who vote their proxies and the proxy advisors, they don't care anyway. They're going to tell you to vote for her no matter what. So yeah, that's it doesn't true. matter. 96% doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And, no one cares. As we've been told repeatedly, to suggest otherwise would be rude. Aggressive. No, aggressive. aggressive. Ooh. Ooh. Bad party Ooh. behavior. Ooh. Uh, finally... The man directly responsible for the doxing of college students across the country for having dumb ideas is decrying the amplification of idiots. Oh, no. Humanity is on a rapid path to oblivion. Billionaire investor Bill Ackman urges Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk to stop amplifying hate for dollars. I mean, I can't Bill, dislike that. That sounds anti-capitalist, this guy. I don't Come mind on. that. I don't mind that, though. Except that he's on Twitter saying the things about doxing on Twitter, the kids. He's doing it on Twitter? He's doing this stuff on Twitter and yeah. he's saying stop amplifying hate on Twitter. You're on an anti-Semites platform uh, <laughs> raving, like, about, raving about anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, to me, that is, still the, that is to me is still the story that I can't believe more people don't talk about. That these CEOs who are... You know, very rightly fighting against anti-Semitism. I get it. Yeah, I get them. I, I get, get what it. Bill Ackman's doing. But to do it on Twitter, uh, and, on this this <laughs> rabid, this is one of the most rabid anti-Semites I've come across, other than maybe Kanye West. This dude is a piece of shit. And to do and, it on his platform is nuts. It's just and nuts. And then top, to, just top it off with the ask of names of children so that you could never hire them again? Yeah. Like, names of children. Bill, you've never said anything you wouldn't take back? Well, like there's we obviously no critical thinking going it's on here. It's all Absolutely, reactionary, Jesse. and Absolutely. they can't control their emotions. They all need deep, deep therapy and publicists. <laughs> Not to mention like, that... Get, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Go ahead, Jesse. I was going to say, stop, stop reacting. Like, they should not be allowed to say shit. I was going to say, somebody, somebody should just turn off his finger. They're not mature enough. Not to the mention maturity, the emotional intelligence, as a, none a, of it's there. Being Jewish in America, academia is one of the, the few safe places for Jewish people in America. So it's like, it's ironic that they're coming after academia. Like it's, they don't know what the hell they're doing, honestly. Well, here's the second headline from this past week. Billionaire Bill Ackman calls on Harvard to suspend students who allegedly removed Jewish student from protest. So now he's intervening with the Harvard with administration a punishment. Yeah. with uh. a punishment. It's crazy. For a student it's crazy. It's who nuts. he doesn't it's a bad so students look. he doesn't agree it's with. Down I mean, in like, the leads, man. like, and this is like, uh, this is what you're doing with your time. It is Bill, really, really strange. You don't have any fucking other thing to do. Don't you? Or don't you have to be busy losing no, your herbal life bets now? Like, uh, like again, what, what does he need to do? Again, what makes me sad is that he could be taking this, ang and I get again, again, I he get could take the it anger. Out on Elon Musk. Yes, exactly. Yes, I mean, yes. I, yes I, that that's why I don't it, get. Like, I, I get the anger. I just don't get the target. It makes no, absolutely no sense. He's so, bullying. It, that, that's what billionaires are. They're all big bullies that have no emotional intelligence and no maturity. Honestly, I at mean, some point... Sounds do, right, Jesse. Do, 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 do they have to stop living in like a Judd Apatow movie? Can we all stop being diaper I baby I am sick men? of Judd Apatow like, movies. Um, so your assholes are the list of people who funded SBF. Every company with a 2050 carbon target, given that we're dead by then, appointing directors instead of electing them. And the man responsible for doxing college students still running his mouth. What do we got? Mm. Does anybody want to go first? I don't want to go first. This uh, time. To me, it's Aww. between that that initial <laughs> list. Um, and I enjoyed the theater of that, by the way, Matt. Congratulations. <laughs> that initial list uh, that supported <laughs> SBF. And then, of course, Bill Ackman. Um, that's for me. That's what I'm debating. I'm going to go. I think that the list, the SBF list is a bit more... Timely in the sense that this story is about to die forever, whereas the Bill Ackman thing is going to keep going for months. Yeah. Um, so this I'm voting for the the list. Uh, that I mean, that's a sad. It was a sad statement. No risk management. Shit show of corporate governance. And I'm sure most of these people on their websites probably 
praise their ESG programs and they, they, they virtue signal their, you know, their ESG departments. And so it's all bullshit. That's my vote. Jesse? I am actually going to go with the 2050 carbon. Oh, wow. because I like it. Yes. We all are like, oh, these companies are trying, but maybe when we realize they're actually not trying at all hard enough or none of the things that they're trying mm-hmm. are going to actually positively affect where we yeah. are, we'll start to vote differently. So well, you, you know what it is, Jesse, is that it's because it's entered in that to like most exhausting category that people, yeah. like, like, they don't even know how to talk about this anymore. But yeah. Ari? I'm going to go wow. with... Appointing directors. What? Oh. <laughs> yep. That's just because, it's a good, like, good day they're for Matt. literally to telling us we're going to assume that this yeah. person will be elected because that's Matt's just what happens. Role. It's that just is. like they're so out in the open with it. I, I, I hate the, it. The assumption is a pure asshole move. There's no way you'd vote against whatever we right. said. I hate that. And that was, um, I'm glad you that mentioned that, Ari, Ari, because that was exactly Nell's point. There's a, there's an arrogance because the, the, we, the CEO creates the board and there's an arrogance behind it, right? That's the mm-hmm. part that is most troubling. Matt, you got to break the tie. So. Wow. that I didn't want to break a tie um, <laughs> uh, because I chose them all and I think they're all legitimate Just assholes. Just get to this it. Week. Get to it. Uh, I'm going to go with I, I'm going to go with Ari and appointing no. directors is what I'm going to go with. This um, I'm going to go with even Ari though that's because, every Even though that's every week. But look, investors, you don't have to vote for the director who got appointed. You can vote them out. I don't care that they've been there for two months and management chose them and it feels like icky. You don't You don't owe them a thing. Like you vote them out. Just say, you know what I'm not cool with? You appointing a director without me getting a vote. So don't do it anymore. Vote them out. Vote every new appointed director out. Then you've got a director slot for you to fill. That's Matt, do you think, say no. Matt, do you think part of the problem is that it's it, this is like a human resources issue? Because maybe it would be <laughs> awkward for a director. The, your first day on the job is the annual meeting. Isn't that like, that's a <laughs> that lot of pressure, right? I, mean, I know you're well, making, no. like, making $400,000 to show up three times a year, but there's got to be a lot of pressure when you they show up and all it. the shareholders are there. They, they put the best director. bagels are out. Like it's a, like, uh, it's a they lot. It's a that, lot. They they put that director in like the farthest seat at the end of the really long table, and they're like, "Oh, thanks to Stacy for joining us today." And they wave at the end yep. of the table, and Stacy raises her glass of tea, and that's it. That's all she has to do. She doesn't get asked a question because everyone's like, "She just got here. Don't ask her anything." Yeah, give Let's her a go break. She's just exhausting. learning where the microwave is. Yeah. <laughs> Exhaust us. Yeah, come on, depress me, Jesse. Oh, oh, I will. All right. (laughs) I'm not ready. First up, one of my favorite companies. McDonald's CEO (laughs) says consumers are suffering difficult times. Consumers suffering difficult times can actually be a good thing for his business. Oh, my God. Say that out loud. Are you kidding? He said it. He not only said it out loud, he said it during the Q3 earnings call. (laughs) CEO Chris... Kempsinski. Yeah, is, is that considered a, a joke, Max? Remember, we covered CEO jokings at earnings call. They're st- oh. good for the stock price. Is no, it, is that, I, I no, think he no. was. I you think, think he was actually legitimately okay, um, excited. This, yeah, this is serious. He said it's clear that consumers continue to be more discriminating about what and where they spend. However, he continued in a difficult in difficult economic times, the McDonald's brand and our positioning on value is an opportunity oh, for us. Oh, there you go. Oh, value. Man. Wow. This is this he loves is downturns. something that can only be said by someone making twenty one point five million dollars last year and value. sitting there going, Dee dee dee, stinks <laughs> for you. Also, may I interject as the person who probably frequents McDonald's the most out of everybody here? Oh no. Oh, yes. oh. McDonald's I wanna hear this. is not cheap. Yeah. No, in in Ooh. fact, <laughs> prices really have been on the rise this yes. whole year. I was gonna say, uh, Jesse, that that one of the reasons why they're getting a stock bump is because they're they're showing that raising prices has helped them this year. They're making a shit ton more money by Horrible. raising prices yeah like when i'm done i'm like i might as well have gone to chipotle no you're right what's crazy about this 
What's crazy to me about this is can we just subsidize healthy grocery store oh, get, food? Stop, like, stop. Oh, really? what a socialist. Stop. Oh, get Come on. out of here. What's your next story? Come on. My next story is very closely related to this. Uh-oh. It's Well, it's tangential to this. Meanwhile, Novo Nordisk, Lily, see going. insatiable demand for weight loss drugs. Well, course, right? So, <laughs> I, I mean, they must they must be colluding on this. Well, like, Jesse, oh. what's fascinating about these weight loss drugs is that it, it's not like the way it works is that you eat a ton and then you take the pill and you lose the weight. It's it actually makes you it kills your appetite, right? It, you no, you're, yeah. So you're disgusted by the thought of McDonald's. So what's happening no, is they, they can't afford shopping at the grocery store. So they're going out, they're buying their McDonald's. And then a, several months later, they're like, uh-oh, I'm really, really large now. I need to go ask for my weight loss drugs. Yeah. And then not eat for a little while. But then once they stop taking them, they're going to put all the weight who's back this, on. That's how these day? drugs work. Who's this day you're imagining, by the way? <laughs> yeah. McDonald's consumers, man. McDonald's man. Ari. That's the CEO. Ari. It's Ari. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's, by the way, their board is one of the most interconnected, incestuous boards in the United States. So congrats to them for stepping out ahead. Of well, coming issues. out of Chicago, that's no surprise. I Nana. will say, like, I... I feel strongly against these weight loss drugs. I do know that there are certain purposes where they can be beneficial. Like if people are super obese and they need, well, diabetes, of course, that's what they're made for. But if people are very obese and they need to drop some weight fast in order to be able to continue on like a more sustainable regimen, fine. But they're being way abused and overused. So this is exhausting to me. Especially piggybacking off of that other headline. Don't say piggy while doing this. <laughs> what, else, what else you got? Oh, oh. All right. And then this last one, it's kind of long. So you got to stick with me here. Oh, but oh, great. The headline is Quant- Qantas. Qantas. Qantas yeah, <laughs> burns through remaining goodwill as new CEO Vanessa Hudson sticks to Alan Joyce's old script. Oh. So oh, Vanessa. we talked about Vanessa Hudson, right? We were all yep. like, okay, glass cliff and sucks for her because one of the first things, if not the first thing she did was apologize for literally the entire history of <laughs> Alan Joyce <laughs> yeah. when she took over as CEO. Mm-hmm. Something that we didn't discuss and that kind of was skimmed over in a lot of the articles I read when I covered that story. It was the fact that she was the CFO and very much like kind of a right-hand man to him. So Mm -hmm. she did take part in some of his, she definitely had the position to like challenge him in the decisions he was making and she didn't. So just point that out. But she's gone around the whole first few months that she's been CEO. She's gone to the customers, the staff, shareholders saying that she's going to resurrect the airline's um, uh, reputation and all she of that. Apologizing she, was, she was building up some goodwill, if if you will. <laughs> and then no puns. This article said <laughs> she opted to detonate the sliver of goodwill during this detonate. past week yeah. because yeah. she lodged a highly technical defense against the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission's legal action alleging mm. that Qantas sold thousands of tickets to unsuspecting customers on flights that had but already But they already apologized canceled. for Whoa. that. <laughs> they already apologized. They already the admitted it, but then the goodwill. why are they mounting yeah. a defense Cold instead money. of just paying and remedying yeah. it, right? Yeah. So she did that, which is shady, right? Okay, mm-hmm. so that's an alarm. And then Hudson and Goiter had to stand in front of like all of these angry people People at their annual general meeting and try to be honest and truthful and transparent and instead or, or at least they had the opportunity to be and instead they were vague they were shutting people down goiter tried to stifle questioning particularly around how he let joy sell 17 million worth of quanta shares right before he left like just being yeah. grimy God. Yeah. so and goiter grimy. and chairman goiter is actually leaving so really this the attention really is on hudson here so it's- the truth comes out on what type of person she is becoming and that maybe her act over the past few months was just that but i did want to point out a silver lining mm-hmm. here the yep. agm culminated in 83 percent vote against the airline's rem- no remuneration surprise. report yeah, no oh. which is close to record yeah but i will yeah, but say this 
Can I make it? It's a bit of a bronze lining, though, Jesse. Because, okay, okay, okay. Because I will say this. Uh, I'll allow that. And we're talking uh, next week, I think we're going to have uh, Rachel Alambakis on the show. She's a managing editor of FS Sustainability. Yeah. She'll, she'll, she'll go more deeply into these Australian topics. But the way it works in Australia is this is that uh, you need two consecutive votes against Say On Pay. The, the first vote, although alarming, is not binding, unfortunately. But if you have a second vote against it, what it allows you to do as a shareholder in Australia is you get the opportunity to vote uh, against the whole slate of directors. You're allowed to vote out the directors. So, so you get two negative votes uh, creates this third option to vote out the entire board. So we'll but see what happens. was this vote against her pay? No, or? it's a vote. Uh, all, all pay. All, the whole... It was uh, the whole... Say our pay, or, the whole yeah. pay, yeah. So, but it's her plus board, right? Yeah. Because Joyce is the one who walked away with the money. And she, I read her contract. She got half of the money offered that Joyce got. Oof. Like she basically took a 50% pay cut to do all of this horrible work. Cleaning and now up, Goiter's yeah. leaving too. He's already made millions for Wait, this. didn't he say he wasn't going to step down? No, he, he said is, he wasn't. He is then he now he says he is in 2024. Yeah. Because my guess is he doesn't want to spend, deal with this. To spend more time with his family? Or yeah, what? yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think Likely. Anyways, we knew she was set up for failure. We knew this. But so you, this just yeah. this, this is goes to this prove cringe. the point. And but this Jesse, is exhausting. You're right to point out, though, though, she is a lifer at Qantas. She's been there she since is. the 90s. She was the I CFO while yeah. so, this whole thing about the tickets was happening. You don't mm-hmm. think she knew what they were that yeah. they were selling tickets for flights that were canceled? You're the it, CFO. It is a bit <laughs> unusual because usually in these cleanup situations and these glass cliff CEO situations, you do find They're an new. outsider to, to take all the... Yeah. yeah. So she she does deserve some of this heat. All right. All right. So we've got McDonald's. <laughs> I'm really excited about... I forgot about McDonald's. ...difficult times. <laughs> we have, Ari's not voting <laughs> for We have hungry. the weight loss drug uh, demand uh, and we have Qantas Goodwill... Um, uh, uh, exploding. Uh, no, wait, not exploding. Detonating. Detonating. <laughs> I don't. I don't like that. I don't like detonating. You know, I find the McDonald's story refreshing, not exhausting. Oh, like, like a diet what? coke. <laughs> you want more diet? What are you saying? Forced to eat McDonald's because they can't afford their grocery bill. Ari, Ari's just excited <laughs> to eat there. No. It's just you know, honesty is oh. refreshing. Uh, that's, look, that's one way of looking at this. Yeah. Playbook. That's true. Yeah, this that's is true. great. That's one way. She was of like, looking. "This is good for us," and you know what? <laughs> it's true. So I can see that. That's not your vote. I'm, I'm guessing. Wow. That's not my vote. Capitalism in a nutshell. Wow, Ari. <laughs> um, the the Qantas story definitely exhausted me, so I'm gonna go with that. Um, it is getting exhausting. We're covering Qantas more than anyone I on the know. planet. There, there was a lot of Qantas headlines, to be honest. I'm gonna go with McDonald's because. And Ari's wrong um, <laughs> because this it may have been unspoken before, but it's not unspoken in uh, if you like look at the stock prices, if you tra- trace like the history of economic downturns, how people's behavior changes during downturns. Mm-hmm. They know people turn to fast yeah. food yeah. and cheaper food um, and, and like more soda, more they call like, themselves a household name. So wow. I, I actually think that this is like part of an ongoing, you know, multi-decadal process. That feels much more exhausting than the other two. Oh, you're exhausted by the cycles. Yeah, this is like okay. another cycle. Of the same he has thing. lived through more of those than we have, Jesse. Oh. Oh. I, I will say this, Matt. I, I do want to vote for McDonald's because can we add to that? Uh, the, the, the way we prey on people in this economy, right? Can we add to that? Uh, places like Walmart and Target that sell shit that just fails after like two months yeah, or like plastic, appliances. Shit. Appliances yeah. now last like two years and that's okay. Uh, meanwhile, my mom had a dryer from Kenmore that lasted her like 30 years. But now if it breaks <laughs> down in three years, it's like, oh, you know, but it, but it's true. Like we, we find these price points that's just below quality to prey on people who can't afford things that actually last and it's 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 I, really troubling it's really troubling push back on that it's not that Go. people can't afford it i feel like people are always looking out for deals like black friday deals for example 
um, TV manufacturers make specific Black Friday TVs to sell that are lower quality. Yeah, and they're yes. crap. And I that's have, what I we want. Buy them. That's what I we want. I absolutely do not agree with you, Ari. The, the, I, the pricing is 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 intentionally leading people who can't afford things, who 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 live week to week on their paychecks. It, they're they're pushing them towards the crap. Well, I don't think the throwaway economy is started with people that can't afford shit. I think it started with people that can't afford too much shit and they don't care. Or they have credit, just, they have debt. Wait. So, I, yeah, go ahead. Let's just say that no one's right, but Damien's right. <laughs> All right, moving on to... Wait, I didn't even... We didn't even... Uh, oh, wait, you didn't vote? I didn't even vote. <laughs> we don't I, have a consensus. You voted? Yeah, I wanted to... Because I, I'm really... I'm going to vote for... Uh, I'm getting, getting tired of hearing about this uh, weight loss drug. It's like every news cycle. <laughs> oh, so Jesse, oh, I get to break the tie? <laughs> Jesse, break the tie quickly and let's oh, move on. Geez, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I was just going to vote for it. Qantas. Quantus, oh, let's move on. Yeah, Moving on. Everybody's wrong. That Moving means on. we got to do who won the week in predictions. I have a quick winner. So wow, we're going to be shocked by this. Nell Minow, the queen of good corporate governance. We interviewed her yesterday. We'll put out the shows next week. For this reason alone, she's probably the only person, uh, we're included in this, She's the, probably the only person who can talk about corporate governance, and I'm actually interested. It's like, she's so good. No, she's really so good at what she does. She's so just media-friendly, listenable. She's really just nice. a, she's a great storyteller. I'm excited she for did this tell, episode. She did tell a few stories, and it, the episode went way long because Damien would not shut up. <laughs> because he she's, such a fan because she's actually, no, he's she's so, actually interesting. She's actually she's interesting. such a fanboy. Um, I have a winner. It was announced this week that Taylor Tomlinson, yes. the 29 yeah. year old stand up comedian, is slated to have her very own late night show on first, CBS. Yeah. She's the first, first woman to do show. that, right? The yeah. first network. No. First no. female night nighttime show. Not Samantha She's the B. youngest. Joan Rivers. She's the youngest. The well, that's not, that's, I read that's not a first. network. That's, is CBS, yeah, this is the first like big network. Woman, oh, right? Please, okay. what century do you live in? Means, like, uh, this is like CBS, ABC, NBC, or <laughs> like right, they matter over. anymore? Give her, I'm on. trying to give right. her some credit. Just get over. It. I saw her. Yeah. I saw her perform live a few months ago. So yeah. good for her. Yeah. So she will be the youngest by 20 years at least, cool. and the only woman by the time she's on TV. So Sweet. this is great. That's good. Um, that. I my winner is as you sow. As You Sow, which is uh -huh. a nonprofit based in California, they actually file a lot of proxies um, and they're always targeting things like, you know, give us a report that, on how you're dealing with diversity issues inside your company or carbon or things like that. They're like, uh, they're one of the woke, just got subpoenaed by Jim Jordan for potential antitrust violations um, and, uh, and, I mean, all they, they're a nonprofit, right? Like, so the antitrust what? violation is like, they are coalescing investors around a social good to stifle competition. And it's, it's the most wow. s heinous, like stupid subpoena I've ever read. That's creative. It had no hint of irony. <laughs> And wear it as a badge of honor as you sow, because the idiots yeah. think you're a threat. The idiots think you're the threat. Yeah, I want to be subpoenaed. Cool. I, be subpoenaed. I know, right? I'm jealous. <laughs> Jim Jordan, come after turn? us. Jesse, it go ahead. It is Jesse's turn. All right. 13 victims of sexual assault finally get some justice. Actually, it's 20. This. It's 20. Well, <laughs> 20 came forward, but 13 were cited. Okay. Oh, Od oh, O'Day oh. Asset Management to close after sexual assault allegations Thank you against for the this up. founder Thank you Crispin Ode. I know I'm surprised Wait, it didn't come up. A whole up. company. Crispin shut O'Day down? has already been ousted. The founder. He already he's already been ousted. But five months after the allegations, these 20 women came forward. O'Day Asset Management is to close. Yeah, he it's plunged over. one of London's oldest hedge fund groups. And I want to read this quote because I wasn't sure, like, oh, is, is this good? But here's a quote from one of the women. My overriding reaction is one of hope. I pray, not naive hope. The fact that his demise, once it started, was so swift and clear does, does give me hope that attitudes are changing and that women might start to believe that they can speak up. So yes. I haven't read anything else about 
any CEO founder that has committed sexual assault having their company closed this yeah. quickly. This they don't quickly. even get to. They don't even mostly have to like pay money or yeah. do it. Like sometimes they just sell off to Microsoft. So, anyways, I loved this. I thought that was great. Well, this gets us. They win the week into um, predictions. Damien, you have a prediction? Yeah, Damien, after, let's hear yours. After United Auto Workers successfully unionizes more non-union car companies, I know they're going after Toyota and others, we're about to be flooded with 10,000 horrible Elon Musk headlines on why unions are evil. We're going to hear... We're going to hear... Blah, blah, blah. We're going to hear every opinion... Blah. About why he hates his workers and why he hates uh, unions. It's going to be so. Are they? Addiction. Are they leaving? Are they? Is he going to leave the U.S. like manufacturing wise? How are people going to still work there? Because they can make so much more money at the other three. Because it's the cult of Elon. They're going to stay because they worship the cult of Elon. Unbelievable. Dude, I Jesse, think they're gonna Ari, do you prediction. guys have predictions? Tesla's unionizing. Right, wow, Tesla. Tesla's unionizing. I'm going right? to fifty. I'm going to save us some time here. <laughs> yes. Since we're like way over. That yeah, way means over. I'll have the last <laughs> short prediction here, which is the weird music to oh, wait, make prediction. That's the wrong music. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was it's supposed up. to be that music. My final prediction is Free Float's new proxy driven show on the alternative democracy is a massive hit. In anticipation of that, a sponsor emerges to be our key partner in delivering literally the best and only proxy recommendation show in the history of shows. Is it you, listener? Are you that sponsor? We are open to your call. Be our corner. Serious inquiries only. (laughs) No, any any inquiry. Any inquiry. Yeah, like uh, we'll take a t-shirt for it. That is Jesse, the money whisperer, Ari, the data queen, Damien, the guy who says stuff, and I am an analyst whole. We are free float. Come back next week with more stuff. Until then, goodbye.